It's nothing personal. It's just business. Hello? That's how some people do things. Right away. To us, everything we do is personal. Because anyone can answer the call. It's who shows up that matters most. That's the quality of your independent agent and the company that stands behind them. Ask Curry Maffet Insurance in Dublin if auto owners make sense for you. First Friday means business breakfast. It is a great day for business in Dublin, Lawrence County. I uh, hope you've enjoyed a great breakfast. So we're going to return thanks and we're going to get our program started. If you would, bow with me and pray. Father, we thank you so much for our, our beautiful new day today. Lord, thank you for the gift of a new day of life. Uh, thank you for an opportunity to gather and have fellowship with one another and, and do the work, Lord, that we need to do in this community to, to bring glory to you. Uh, thank you this morning for the food that's been prepared. And Lord, I ask that you bless it to the nourishment of our bodies and our bodies to your service in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. If you would now help me welcome Brian Nash, our chamber board chair. Joshua, you must have a lot of people that like you because this room is pretty full. So we've got a great program today. Uh, this week we got a lot to be thankful for. First off, the dogs beat the Gators. Go dogs. The Braves won the World Series. Go Braves. So... Um, We've got some good speakers today, uh, but we want to first start off with our city talk. Um, oh, by the way, Mr. Phil, Premier, the Chamber would like to say thank you for sponsoring tonight's event. Or, the Chamber would like to say thank you for sponsoring today's oh, event, Premier. So. I'd just like to update you on a few things. Uh, Mr. Louis has already talked to me this morning, and he's thankful for the turn lanes that were put in on veterans, and uh, I can't take a lot of credit for that. Actually, uh, DOT brought that to us and made sure we were good with it and we gave it a big thumbs up and they got that done so I think that's going to be a lot better for traffic flow in the mornings and hopefully uh, help us all get to work a little bit quicker. Um, good news on Hillcrest, it's less than a year out. Uh, the projected finish date is June of 2022 so I'm glad I can say it's less than a year and the other bit of good news is I'm sure if you've been by the old uh, Central and Junior High School that you've seen it's almost gone, a uh, little rubble left, but we're going to be bidding out that project, transportation project, uh, before the end of the year and hopefully we'll get started on construction right after the first of the year and that's uh, the main point of that is the new roundabout at Claxton Dairy and Moore Street that we're really excited about that's going to help traffic in that area. So a lot of things happening in the city of Dublin, we're just happy to be a part of it and looking forward to working with a, a new mayor and our new council members. Thank you. For a county talk, Mr. Trey Kemp. I, I looked back and I thought I dodged a bullet, but at like 7.59 I saw Randy walk in, so I was like, it's coming, it's coming. Uh, just two brief updates. Um, the new recreation building, the recreation of 4-H building, I should say, uh, is about to be totally completed. They're looking to move in uh, the week before uh, Thanksgiving, so we're very grateful for that. Right now those folks are over at um, uh, State Farm Building over on Jefferson and at the Welcome Center, respectively. They're going to be coming together in one place over at Southern Pines, which is fantastic. That will give them direct control over all the activities that are right there and give folks a, a place to go if they've got a real question. So we're very pleased with that, and uh, that's been an effort. It's been a, a labor of love, but we finally, I think we're finally about to put a bow on it and call it good. Um, the, the other thing I'd like to bring to everybody's attention is we're just about done with fixing all the roads from our flood last month. Um, we lost, I think it was 42 roads um, in the flood last month. Uh, we lost about three uh, paved roads and the rest of them were dirt. It has taken us the better part of this entire 30-day pe period to get us back to where we need to be. But uh, we've only got one road still under construction, but otherwise the county has, has fixed everything that it needs to fix, and uh, I think we're back up and moving. And that's what I have. I appreciate y'all. Um, miss, We have Miss Paige Wiggum from the chamber to give us our chamber talk. And those who do not know Paige, she is our new member coordinator, and I really would like to ask for a round of applause. She came on with us back in April, and she has done an excellent, excellent job. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm not sure if you guys saw the Shop Locopoly cards that were in the back this morning, but they're there, and it has started. Um, 
So if you shop at five businesses and collect five receipts from any of these 26 companies, you'll bring this in to the chamber with your name and contact information on it, and we will draw for a winner for $1,300 worth of gift cards December 1st Friday. So um, we're really excited about this. We've already had people turn in the cards, so um, get your cards in for a chance to win $1,300. Um, and then we also are doing a Christmas decorating contest. So if you guys do decorate for Christmas, um, we would love to get you guys involved. The winner of that will also be announced on first Friday next month. And then you'll get breakfast um, on the chamber for, um, for the following Monday or Tuesday, just whenever you guys are open. Um, and we're also doing a promotion calendar for November and December. So if any of your businesses is having special sales, open houses, um, or anything special that you're doing for Christmas, let us know. We want to put it on a big calendar to kind of have one collective place for all of that. And so all of these you can register for by emailing me or on our website. So thank you guys very much, very much. When you start with career training at Oconee Fall Line Technical College, you'll discover a diverse student body, strong students who are focused and disciplined, and a caring environment that gives you a vision to succeed. OFTC's 130 plus programs will prepare you to start a new career in two years or less. Plus, it's affordable. Ready for a successful career? Start with OFTC today, online or in person. Oconee Fall Line Technical College. Careers begin here. The City of Dublin Natural Gas provides the most cost-efficient source of energy available today. So for your home, choose the most natural resource. Safe, clean, efficient. All new subdivisions around the Dublin area have natural gas available. Start reducing your energy bills today with Dublin City Natural Gas Department. Natural gas, the smart choice. Call 277-5048 today and let us help you start saving today. From humble beginnings with a desire to serve the Dudley community, Bank of Dudley has grown to five locations, serving Lawrence, Twiggs, and surrounding counties. Serving our community since 1905, the Bank of Dudley is looking forward to its second century of community banking. Drop in today to any of our five locations, Jeffersonville, Dudley, East Dublin, Veterans Boulevard, and Downtown Dublin. Bank of Dudley, member FDIC, and an equal housing lender. Um, we have Mr. Phil Best from Premier Properties, and he's got his team here. Thank you for the sponsorship. Yes, sir. <clears throat> In the words of Bubba East, how y'all doing? <laughs> On behalf of this table right here, uh, the employees and partners of Premier Properties, we'd like to just thank the Chamber for giving us the opportunity to do this. We, uh, we appreciate it. Premier is a real estate company, uh, property management. We do have a, a section called Executive Rentals. It's a good solution for a lot of your people that are uh, coming in for industries and such and had much success with that. And then we've also uh, do a business development section, with, especially with Garment Construction Company here in Dublin and about four or five other clients y'all probably wouldn't know. Uh, again, thank you. I do want to say one thing. I'd like to tell you that Joshua Kite and I have been on the same team for about 12 years. And if y'all will follow his vision and support his vision, you will see that he will take our entire community up to another level from city limits to city limits. So I, I'm asking you now to give me support. Thank you. Mr. Best, on behalf of Dublin, um, we appreciate all the years of service you've put into our community. Thank you. Um, well, the moment we've all been waiting for. Um, Joshua Kite, to my knowledge, is the only Harvard graduate we have here in Lawrence County. We may have another one, but graduating from Harvard Law School, we all know him, so he really doesn't need an introduction. Joshua, come talk to me. I'm also a graduate of the University of Georgia, which is <laughs> a lot more relevant. <laughs> um, well, it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, good morning to all of you. And I um, am excited about what the future of Dublin holds. I have um, just a few comments that I want to make, um, and then I want to answer any questions that you have. I'm sure 
a lot of you are interested in, in what specifically uh, we're going to be working on over the next couple of years. But first, I just want to tell you a little bit about election night. So it was about 8.30, 8.45, and we were sitting at the courthouse, and um, my uh, nine-year-old came up to me and he said, um, you know, do you know what the uh, results are yet? And I said, well, uh, Silas, it, it's looking good. He said, well, it may be a little bit of time before we can get it, you know, official. He said, is that good enough for me to go home and watch the Braves? <laughs> <laughs> so, so there is a lot going on that night. I hope it will be memorable for them because, uh, you know, they – they stayed up till midnight uh, watching the Braves win the World Series, and I think uh, what happened on election night was secondary uh, in their minds, but it was a good, clean campaign. I was very proud of that. Everybody acted civilly. We put ideas out there. Um, there were visions, competing visions of what the future of the town could look like, um, and we had massive voter participation. Um, the turnout was over 3,000 people, which I believe is the most uh, in the history of city elections. So that means that people uh, all over the community were engaged in this election, they were interested in the outcome, and they wanted to have a say about what our town would look like. It was a great example of democracy in action, and it, it was one of those moments that made you proud to be an American, especially when you saw how all the candidates um, acted towards each other. Um, there were five council candidates, and they, uh, I think they, start a, a friendship circle. <laughs> I see Sarah over here. I don't know if any of the others are here. Uh, Sarah was, you know, the top vote getter among the council candidates, but she and, uh, and uh, Rich and Tess, who were ultimately the winners, formed a great bond of friendship with uh, Rat Brown, Albert Rat Brown, and Brandon Chain. And it was great to see all of them um, treating the election uh, not as a personal contest, um, and not with any enmity or there's nothing, everything was so clean and friendly among them. They just were putting out their personalities and their visions and letting the people vote. And that's the way it should be done. I was very proud of our town and the way the elections were handled. Um, just as a, a note for those who are interested, the certification of the election will actually occur later today. Uh, there's a one military ballot that is due back this afternoon uh, there are two provisional ballots, but when those, uh, basically when the end of the day comes today, it'll be the final results, they'll be certified, and then on November 18th, which is the next city council meeting, there'll actually be a handover of the mayor's gavel, because I'm filling um, Phil's uh, term, I'll be in for two years and I start pretty much immediately. The other, the three at-large candidates, they will start in January. Um, <clears throat> the first thing that I did after the election was go to Ms. Drigger and Phil and ask for what advice they had to give me. And they don't mind me telling you what it was. Phil said, number one, you must prioritize. You can't do everything. You can't do everything all at once. You have to know what your priorities are. And number two, once you have your priorities, you've got to get them one bite at a time. Uh, and I think that's, I, I know how long Phil worked in this office and um, he knows how to get things done and so I take that advice very seriously. Um, I talked with Ms. Drigger and her advice was to say no early to people, uh, which I thought was really interesting and I asked her what she meant about that and she said, you will have a lot of people coming to you to ask for things and you have to know that you can't do everything. You have to be able to say no. And she said, don't, don't lead them on. Don't try to please them. Don't try to protect their feelings. If you can't do it, if it's not ethical, if it's not within the, the power of the city, then you need to immediately tell them no so that they understand where you, where you stand on that and what the law is and what you're able to do and what you can't do. She said, if you say no early, it will save you a lot of problems. And I thought that was excellent advice. Her other piece of advice was to start meetings on time, which I, you know, I thought that was interesting too. She said that um, if you if you don't start meetings on time, then the meetings will get later and later and later. Um, also, starting meetings on time shows that you uh, bring professionalism 
to the job. So I thought that was that was good advice as well. Um, as to what the future holds, I know that there are many, many different things that the city has uh, in its hands. Uh, so the what I would like to just discuss very briefly is rather than specific policies is values. Um, I think first you have to know the values that you want to bring into the city. <laughs> the values that that um, that I, I hope that we can uh, display through our actions as a city are transparency. Um, transparency builds trust, and that's why I'm such a big believer in it. Whenever, especially when you're dealing with groups of people who may have some some lack of trust, by being totally transparent about what you're doing and why you're doing it, that builds trust. Number two is we have to have high expectations for performance. Um, anytime that you're dealing with any type of large uh, institution, organization, business, you have to set the tone of the culture. And the culture of the city of Dublin um, has got to be one of high expectations of performance. Also, there has to be accountability. If you have high expectations for performance, you have to hold people accountable to that level of performance. <coughs> And all of that has to be done with total fairness. Um, <clears throat> there is a, um, an idea that many people have about small town governments that it is a system of patronage uh, with favors traded. And, and whether that's true or not, the way that we com combat that is one, to make sure that we don't do that, and two, treat everything transparently. We cannot have a system where people are favored because of their status, their privilege, their background, who they went to high school, who they go to church with. Um, none of that can matter. We have to address all issues on the basis of objective criteria of will it improve our town. And uh, that means that we have to set aside what our personal feelings about somebody or some group may be and do what's best for everybody on an objective basis. And that's one of the main things that I hope that we can do as a city. And a lot of this is already in place in the city, but I want to be very explicit whenever I start to say that these are the values that I want to bring. <clears throat> as far as particular policies go, the things that I, I made a list a couple of months ago, um, and I, I said these are things I want to think about whenever we have a proposal that comes to city council. Um, does it create job opportunities? Does it create educational opportunities? Does it support people who are going through tough times without creating a habit of dependence? Does it encourage family formation? Does it make neighborhoods safer? Does it generate tax revenue from people who don't live here? Does it bring talented people back to town or to town for the first time? Does it make our town more beautiful? Does it support our local businesses? Does it give additional recreation opportunities to our citizens? Does it promote healthy physical traits? Does it advance science, knowledge, science or knowledge? And finally, does it align with God's will as best we can discern through thoughtful prayer and consideration? And I think that if we have a policy that comes before us, we can say, does it do any of these things? Is it for the community? And if it is for the community, then we need to support it. But if it's for a particular person, for a particular faction, and not for the whole community, then that's not what we need to be doing. And I think if we can keep those things in mind, that these are the things that we're trying to accomplish for all of our community, then that makes any decision that comes before mayor and council a whole lot easier to address. Now I know that y'all may, may have questions about, uh, you know, economic development programs, and um, I think that at least 200 people started watching the 30-minute video on economic development that I put out. I don't know how many people actually finished it, but um, I, I have uh, spoken at length on my ideas of, of what uh, a vision for economic development over the next de decade for Dublin might look like. Um, that's very important because I believe that the rising tide lifts all ships. If we can increase the amount of 
money circulating in our local economy and keep it here, that's going to make us all wealthier and give us more opportunities for, uh, for education and for quality of life. Um, I'm a, one of the most important things is uh, safe neighborhoods. And I say that because I, during the campaign, I spent a good bit of time walking around neighborhoods that are not safe. Um, and what you realize is that there has to be a basic level of safety before you can have any type of further development, before you can have recreation opportunities, before you can have education, before you can have job creation, you have to have safety. And some of the neighborhoods in this town don't have that. Um, and some of the areas of town have become essentially controlled by gangs. Um, we don't see that. Most of the people in here uh, live in, in very safe neighborhoods, um, and we don't see that. But I saw it uh, during the campaign, and as a matter of fact, after I met with Lance and Julie the morning after the election, uh, Sarah and I and Rich, and um, we went to Robert Street, uh, where they, there was a gang killing uh, not that long ago. And we walked the street and talked with the neighbors who lived on that street. And, and I had done this before the election, but I wanted to go back immediately after the election um, and just to let them know that, that this is a priority and we want to hear what's going on and find solutions to those problems. So, you know, my view is that there's always going to be a level of crime. Um, that's just reality. Uh, we can do some things to reduce property crimes, we can do some things to re reduce violent crime, but we cannot accept organized crime. Organized crime competes with government for authority. Organized crime gives uh, benefits uh, to the people who are uh, in the neighborhoods that it controls. Uh, one of the ladies told us that um, some of the gang members would come in with nice, beautiful cars and open the trunk and there would be boxes of shoes for the kids who live in the neighborhood all the kids would come to the car and get the boxes of shoes. So that's, that's organized crime. And what they're trying to do is create a culture of young children who are committed to the gang rather than committed to the community. Um, one of the things that, that we discussed is that everybody wants to be a part of a team. Um, so we've got to give some alternative healthy team choices uh, to these kids so that the only team that they right now maybe see that they can join us is the team of the gang we got to get them onto other teams whether it's football teams or sports teams or education teams there have got to be um, other opportunities for those kids to get um, out of that environment and to see that participating in the regular economy is going to be better for them uh, than than what they're being shown um, in addition to safe neighborhoods uh, from just a crime point of view, there's also a traffic uh, safety point of view. And this may seem like a minor thing, but it really goes to the quality of life of living in Dublin and living in town. Um, as I've walked through neighborhoods in Stonewall and, and Kingswood and um, other places in town, one of the major issues that people in otherwise safe neighborhoods have is that the cars are going too fast and that, they're, uh, that they feel that it's not safe for the children to play outside. Um, and I know that there is always a struggle between having efficient transportation and people being able to go through the streets and get to their job quickly, uh, but that has got to be balanced against pedestrian uses of the streets. And I look forward to working with Matthew on, um, on seeing what kind of engineering solutions we can have to make some of these neighborhoods safer for kids. Um, strong community was the final part of my campaign and what I really hope to work on as mayor. A strong community comes from quality of life issues, from recreational act activities, and finding, emphasizing, and holding up those shared values that we all have as a community. We've got to celebrate those things that we all hold in common. And there's a lot that we all share. There's a lot that we hold in common. And those are the things that we need to, to celebrate. And we can do that through our cultural, historic, and recreational opportunities. And I think that's got to be a big part of what the city does. So I know I've talked for a long time, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.
Conservative treatment options are typically where we start with both knee and hip arthritis. So if you come in to see us and your hip is beginning to be arthritic or your knees beginning to be arthritic, there's sort of a stepwise approach that we take. Anti-inflammatories, which are medicines like Motrin, Advil, Aleve are usually sort of first line. We have prescription forms of those medications that we can use. In our elderly population, though, that becomes a little more difficult because they have comorbidities, things like diabetes or stomach ulcers or disease that they can't take those medications even hypertension so we'll try to treat them with medications if it's appropriate when it's not then we go on to things like injections so cortisone injections or there's these things called visco injections or visco supplements which are lubricating type injections that we can use to treat knee arthritis as well as hip arthritis to try to control people's pain and a lot of times we do that for years for people before they get to the point where those are no longer working and we're ready to talk about knee or hip replacement